Sit back and relax while I listen to Train Kickers Podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-hosts Stan and Steve, we're going to take you all around the world of miniature wargaming. On tonight's episode, we are still uh, saying Steve, he's working, I guess, I don't know. He's, he's doing something. But, um, as of this very day, so we are recording on Tuesday, this is the 15th of August, uh, GW dropped an Exemplar Battles that added a few more demon things to make Dan think that there's a small chance at some point actual demons may come out. They won't. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> we thought we would actually go through this. We'll be returning to some 40k content in the reasonably near future, but we figured we'd go through this since it just came out. Um, there is a bit of a story first. Um, for the moment, we're at least going to skip that because you don't need us to retell you the story. And plus, I don't feel I've read it enough to have good confidence with it, which is fine. Um, and then we're going to go through the different units, the missions, all that sort of stuff. This should be a reasonably shorter episode. And um, hopefully we'll have something else out to you somewhat soon, too. One thing I will say, so next week I'm on vacation. The plan is to have at least one thing this week come out and at least one or two things come out next week as well. Um, recorded ahead of time and then it'll be scheduled so that way it'll just drop on most likely on like a Wednesday while I'm out. All right. Um, all other news and stuff like that will be at the end. But otherwise, on to the show. All right. Um, you should take a look at where your camera is and oh, where your position so, is. Because when you lean no, forward, loose. no, it's not that. It's loose, so it was drooping. How about now? We there you go. Now. That that's fine. Although your face is almost off the edge. So the way I position the screen, other oh, okay. way, other way. Okay. There oh, you. Go. No, the oh, other oh, way. This way. There this you. way. Yep. Okay. Yes. There when I go. say the other way, you can't move both mm. ways. That doesn't work. Mm. But there you go. All right. All right. So now, how are you on this Tuesday evening? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I how many hours of Baldur's Gate? The Steam, Steam tells you. Steam tells you okay, how many hold hours. On. Hold on. Hold on. Hold I'm on. waiting for my PS5, so I have currently zero hours. I've, 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 I've put so many hours into this game. But, uh, let me just say, what is it? Under library, I'm assuming? Yeah. Uh, if you just uh, click on the title, library, it will show you. It'll say hours played. Oh. Now, let's keep in mind, before you say it, that if you just have the game, I don't know if you do this, but if you have the game open and you walk no. away, it still counts the time. So if you weren't no. active, no. Okay, so how many does it say? Uh, you know, you get to guess this one. Um. All right, let's see. We talked about recording yesterday, and you said today was a better day. And as soon as you said that, I saw you sign on to Baldur's Gate. So um, how long has it been out? How many days? Uh, That's a good question. I don't want to know. <laughs> it's probably been a week. Uh, I it's... it's think yeah. just about a week at this point um i'm gonna say you're off so you're treating this like a full-time job i'm gonna say 35 <laughs> oh wait you're serious no no yeah. it's higher than that oh no oh. it's way higher than that oh okay <laughs> oh no it's 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 uh 55.3 okay all right yeah that's a pretty good when did it come out i'm trying to look up right now um <laughs> What the actual release date is. Like I said, I'm waiting for my PS5 because I want to be able to... August 3rd. And it's, the, so, the problem, 12, 12 days. You've been on it for yep. 12 days. So um, You're averaging almost five hours a day. It's just... It's so good. It's oh, I'm sure it is, game. actually. I, I'm really excited to play it, but like I said, I, I'd rather yeah. sit at the front if I'm going to sit somewhere I for multiple I've, hours. I've spent, like, no time doing spoilers on YouTube. Good. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil you now. Don't. But it's real... I've had to read save sometimes because oh, sometimes scum, they'll just you gotta come save. Yeah. yeah, there's there's sometimes a TPK, but sometimes because I'm trying to chase a relationship, I'm not gonna tell you with who, but I'm trying yeah. to chase. So anytime it, there's a disapproval, I'm like, nope, sorry, not, I can't. But other than that, um, I haven't lost anyone yet, which is that's good. Actually, surprising because I've come, I've come very close multiple occasions, but I managed to bash my head accidentally through a puzzle which got me a legendary weapon on my cleric that sounds about like you yes and and i'm not again not to spoil it or anything but okay. the ending of it had me almost not just tpk the party but tpk almost the fucking continent so i was like eh, yeah it, it, it was not a uh i i'm glad i'd have to resave that one scum save it but that was a uh, that was yeah. stressful yeah, I did I, have I, a wizard though, so that helped. I'm looking forward to doing it. Like I said, I know next week I'm on vacation, and then work starts up. So yeah. it's like even if I got on PC, I wouldn't be playing it that much. And right now, like we have a we have a Marvel Crisis Protocol tournament this Saturday, which I'm going to be recording games out of. So we'll have those going up soon. 
Um, the following week, we have a Conquest tournament, so I'll be recording that and getting those games up as well. So I, I know for the moment I'm too busy with other stuff anyway, so I'll wait. It'll be on my PS5, and then my wife can inform me of which crazy monster to go after or um, <laughs> how to you know, to restart a save if me. I lose an animal or something. My, my, my daughter does help me. Like She'll actually like I'll, she'll be like, attack this one, like spiders and so stuff. She goes so for the violence. Kind of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then I started a new system. I, I restarted my Infinity, so. Yes. I'll be starting to paint that soon-ish. I got to play two games on a Sunday, mm-hmm. um, and it was fun. I remembered most of the rules, and a lot of the rules that I absolutely fucking despise got changed, like crits. Oh, God. That yeah. that that changed. Um, I like how the new Link teams work. Um, haven't tried reinforcements yet, obviously, because I don't have the, the reinforcements, but other than that, I... I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I just finished painting my six Bekefali. They're done. I'm printing off a bunch of terrain and working on terrain is the other thing. So the rest of this week is probably terrain. Um, I did do my unboxing, which as of time recording, it was put up a few hours ago for the Lancer. Um, I will start working on that. Probably not this week. Probably once I get back is my plan and I'll probably do some live stuff with that or we'll just um, do some YouTube lives while we work on that and other things and just have some Absolutely. general discussions. I'll pay my infinity uh, during that time. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I think that would be something. Plus, uh, what's nice, one thing I will say by looking at it, they did make the arms where it's uh, more of a joint that it rotates into, like on a dreadnought. Oh Rather, yep. th- I was worried about magnets and in there I say like, okay, I can put magnets in this and I look at the last scene, the last page and they show, they pop it on, and rotate them so um that means when they come out with the other kits it should hopefully they'll, at some point they'll just do arm options and then you can just grab the other arms and put them right on um still on the side of the house i'm painting i'm just basing it off of what colors i like the most so we'll figure that out house david <laughs> now uh which was uh uh macabus or something like that oh, macabus is yeah that whichever one i have my i think that's the one my Lancers I have for Titanicus are painted that way. So I'm like, I could just paint a giant version of that. Yeah, I don't mind that. So I, I might do that. Even though it's actually Traitor, I, I don't care. I'm just going to mix it all together. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's the Horus Heresy, honestly. The, the yeah. People well, I'll, be using, yeah. I'll be using it for 40k stuff as well. So, but probably more, more likely Heresy. But either way, I just like the giant model. So I figured I'd work on that. But that'll be uh, once I get back from vacation. That'll probably be the main thing I work on for about a week. It should take me about a week to get them done. All right. Well, why don't we get started then into some demon type stuff? So, as we said, uh, as of today, earlier today, GW dropped a little bit more of demons. So, they've already dropped bound demons on us, which was, hey, here's a way you can at least run some demons. Here's how they can ally in. And we did some battle reports with it as well. And now they've taken the models that they removed, that there were, I guess, you know, (laughs) legacies and... Removed from 40K. Yeah, entirely (laughs) removed from 40K. And then, hey, now here they are. Jesus. Um, So we do have those things back, which is nice. And we have them back with a Corrupted Engine supplement list. So... Much like we did for the other ones, we're going to kind of talk our way through this, discuss what we see. We'll talk about the models themselves as well. Some of them I don't know if I've seen, so I might have to get them pulled up on a separate thing. I've seen most of them. The was it the, the Kitan? I don't. I Kitan is one. just it's the it's the choo, it's the choo choo train, but with legs. That's oh, okay. literally what it is. How it, many? You legs? know, J- two, 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 two. It's got uh, it's got the uh, Lancer legs, like like the uh, backwards legs. Is that an actual like, Forge tall. World model? So, yes and no. It comes with the plastic top body of the choo-choo train, and it comes with the resin legs of essentially a thick boy Lancer. I think it's slightly different from the Lancer legs, if I recall correctly. Is it, is but, it, what's it under? Mechanicum? Ki- I'm just going to leave. Chitin. Oh, yeah. I mean, Chitin. I could just look that up, too. Yeah. I Because I, I have no idea what it's under. But it's Chitin Demon Engine of Corn. Oh, uh, yeah. There it is. The, okay. No, actually, the legs are not Lancer legs. They are completely. They are, but it's, it, the literally the top part is literally the top half of the um, Lord of Skulls. Uh, Lord of Skulls. Thank you. Yep. And the bottom half is resin, essentially. When we get to them, I'll I'll throw them up on the screen for anyone watching. Yeah. For anyone who is listening, if you're listening on the pod, 
uh, whatever podcast you use, you'll just hear us talking. If you're watching on YouTube, we do display this up. Whenever GW puts it up as a for free thing, we display it. If they don't, uh, we don't have the okay for them. Otherwise, if anyone knows how to get a hold of them, let me know. I've tried to reach out and they haven't gotten back to me yet. Uh. That's all right. All right. So let's get into this. Shouldn't take too, too long. Um, nah. Now, some of these first parts will be a bit of a rehash of things that we've talked about, but they put it in here, so it's important to talk about it because people may not be familiar with it, or there could be some small changes, let's be honest. I did see some small changes with yeah. the uh, the etheric dominion, actually, the heedless slaughter. Yeah, I, I figured there's um, going to be some changes, and either way, I'd want to review yeah. it because I know I don't remember it perfectly. Um, all right, so first things first is how you can actually take these into your army. And that's where they go through the Legion Pravian and Corrupted Engines. So they give us in there that if you have a Legion Pravian um, with the Legionis Cybernetica Special Rule. So keep in mind, Pravians in the past, they could bring in just um, Castellax and Vorax. Yeah. yeah. So they were your... Um, uh, why can't I think of the word? I don't know the word you're thinking no, about. Um, for, for what they are, the different types. Because there's that. Centurion? There, Centurion. Yeah, okay. So Centurion. Yeah. I, I don't know. For some reason, that that um, that was Oh, okay. That's your guy. Got, got it. Yeah. yeah. So that was your, essentially, type of Centurion that would let you bring in, essentially, mechanical units. What they said is that, hey, if, you, um, if a unit with the Corrupted Engine subtype is chosen via this rule... Um, which means you can choose them because if you choose that you're a traitor, you may take them instead. So you may take corrupted engines. Um, they just tell you that overall it fits the force org of what it's supposed to be. Um, it's not part of his force org. Um, it occupies the appropriate force org slot, whatever that is. And they said it, the chosen unit fills the slot available as if it were a separate choice. So a decimator chosen via this rule would be a heavy support slot. So it doesn't get to come in for free. Normally, when you take the Bravian, you can just kind of add those units. They take these slots. Um, it doesn't count as Legion of Stardust, so it doesn't get those special rules, um, which the Bravian does. Um, and it doesn't get any special Legion war gear. All the normal rules, the same way the Bravians essentially have worked before. Um, an army can include a maximum of one unit from the Corrupted Engine subtype chosen as matter. So if you take more Pravians, they have to go back to the Castellex and Vorax. They can't take these guys. So you can bring one in with a Pravian, one of whatever it is. They don't stipulate beyond that. Um, quick thing I'll also I'll, I'll go through is just the Corrupted Engine subtype. So all of this has that. You need this rule to be able to come in. For Corrupted Engine, um, you have the Fear 1 rule, unless you already had Fear. And then you get plus one to it, which is nice. So you can get additional fear if that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, any rule or effect that um, that would affect a corrupted subtype affects corrupted engine. So if it affects corrupted, automatically affects these guys as well. Um, if you're all corrupted engines, which there's a rule later that says, hey, you really can't mix if you're not corrupted, uh, corrupted engine subtype. So yes. Um, then you're immune to fear. Makes sense. They're... Dreadnought-ish in those sort of ways. Um, they do talk about... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, you cannot fall back because our weapons are useless, because you're fearless. Um, yeah, it does not fall back, but instead... Oh, yeah. Um, Use D3 automatic he, wounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, if you fail the morale check. So... Oh, sorry, my apologies. I said you're fearless. You're not fearless. You're not affected by fear. You cannot run because your weapons are useless, but you can absolutely fail morale. My apologies, not fearless. You're immune to fear. And if you run, you take D3. It's essentially the way demons were. Yep. Um, if you're hit by a weapon that's force or psychic focus, instant death, and instant death on these guys means D3 wounds. Yep. Yep. Uh, my apologies, like I said before, is actually uh, immune to fear, not fearless. So there is that small distinction because you do have the option of potentially running or not really running... Um, that you take those extra wounds. So you never actually leave, but you might take extra wounds. All right. That is exactly the same as Corrupted really was. At least for all intents and purposes. All right. Why don't you go through the Cyber Thurgy? Absolutely. And you said there is some differences here. Well, no, it's in the, the, demon, the demon realms are different. Oh, my apologies. Okay. 
This is completely new. This doesn't exist. Oh, good. Okay. So I didn't this think is it did. I hadn't seen this before. New. So this is if you have, let's say, a Mechanicum army and you want corrupted units. Basically, you have to have a Cyber Thurgist, um, obviously, because that's that's all your HQs. Um, you have to be part of a detachment with the Traitor Allegiance. Um, and you can uh, select the following Cyber Thurgic Arcana um, instead of the other Cyber Thurgic Arcana with it. All right. And you give you get access to all the rights and weapons that are part of the Anima Malefica. So this is Anima Malefica. Um, you get, again, a right and a weapon. So it's about the right first. First of all, instead of making a shooting attack, uh, you can select a friendly unit within 12 inches that is composed entirely models with the corrupted engine unit subtype. And then you can apply one of the following effects. You can have the chosen unit move immediately a number of inches equal to its unmodified initiative characteristic towards the nearest enemy unit. And if you have a mix of it, then you choose the highest. Run at the enemy. Um, yep, run at the enemy, essentially. Uh, what's really cool, though, it's not a run, so you could charge after this. Yes, that's true. And it's essentially I'm, the yeah. run movement without actually being a run. Exactly. And most of their initiatives are four. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to. It's only four units anyway. Initiative three, initiative. Yeah, so it's initiative four with one initiative three. So an extra four inches ain't bad. Um, oops, sorry. Scroll up. Come on, mm -hmm. computer. There we go. Uh, all models of the chosen to prove their invulnerable save to by one to a maximum of a three up until the beginning controlling player's next turn. So it can go from five up to four up, four up to three up. I didn't see the invulnerable save, so I... I uh, six, the, fives and sixes. Fives and sixes? Okay, so it goes yeah. to four and fives. Okay. Um, and then the last one is all models add plus one weapon skill and initiative. That's massive because I know about one of them is weapon skill five natively. Um, so that's massive right there. You can become weapon skill six and initiative five, which is very nasty. And if I'm not mistaken, all models in the unit add one to the weapon skill and one. Oh, I. Ah, wow. yes. Initiative. I thought that was so, one. I was like, wait. Actually, okay. wait. Weapons, Initiative weapon skill six, good. weapon skill five, weapon skill five. Their, their weapon skills weapon skill tend five. to be five. So you're getting up to six. And, and now Kaiten you're is to, six. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that's. Uh, you're, you're, you're your getting, Praetor levels, essentially, yeah, is what you actually get. On a to. knight, which is ill. Um, <laughs> uh, and you could choose to make a Thibur check before using his power. If it's successful, you could get two of these options. Yep. And if it's failed, you, of course, get the uh, the feedback loop. Yep, feedback and nothing um, cool. Yeah. So then you have the Amthea Excrucius. This is their weapon. It is 18 inches, strength 5, AP 3. It is a, a Cyberthergic Focus. For those who forgot what Cyberthergic Focus is, before making any hit rolls, you have to actually take a Cyberthergic check, essentially. Yeah. Um, so it's Assault 3, Blind, Deflagrate. Yeah. Meh. So here's the problem. Like you would choose to do this or the cyberthergic right. It's nice, but I'm pretty much always doing the cyberthergic right. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's instead of making a shooting attack for mm -hmm. the animatus uh, malevolence means th this is actually a very good attack. W when you put it together, strength five, yes. AP three, you get three of them, causes blind, definitely great. You're going to, as long as you're not hitting people in two up saves, you're going to get wounds. You're going to cause, yeah, exactly. I have a shot at blind, all those things. But I, I, I kind of want the other things. The only reason I would do that is if you end up, I don't know, he, he's either very out of place or my units are already even, honestly, no, even if they're locked in combat, there's a really good reason. You don't exactly. have to that test for it. If one you want. That plus one invul is always, always welcome. Yes. <laughs> Um, what, what's their base sort of leaderships for the guys that would be casting this? It's been a while since I've went through. Are they nines? Or nine tens. tens. Nine, nine tens. Nine tens. So, I mean, if it, if it's night fighting, I probably would be fine with one, but when it's not night fighting, I'd probably be rolling to get two. I think they're stubborn too. So they don't even care about night fighting. Mm, okay. If, if they can't be lowered at all, then I like that a little bit more. I mean, your invul save going up by one is very useful if you're in a spot where you're going to have problems. And the additional to your weapon skill is very good. And there's... Okay, they have to be a corrupted engine. I guess the only the reason you wouldn't do it is if you already lost your corrupted engines. Yeah. Or if they're not saying. near you in any way. They're not 12 within 12 inches. inches. Exactly. So there, there is reason for it, but I'll put it this way. If there's no reason for it, then yes, you're using the weapon. But if you are, please, always write. <laughs> yeah, you you want you would want your cyber thurgis with this ability to be right next to those guys. 
Oh, yeah. So unless your opponent takes them out or takes them all out, you're going to be using these abilities. You know, up your initiative and your weapon skill. Um, you are now hitting ahead of some of the problems that you would have. But all right, all right, I like that. <laughs> we are on to some domains. I'll make a little timestamp right there. All right. Um, you said you noticed the difference in heedless slaughter. So why don't I was going to so what, no slaughter. okay. Why don't you talk about it? Because okay. I'm actually going to look for the stupid. I wanted to look for the to see if there even was a difference. I'm oh, trying to remember okay. which. Do you remember where the demons came out? What exemplary battle it was? It wasn't an exemplary battle. It was just bound demons. If you search bound or demons, you should find it. Yeah, I'm looking on the downloads page. Yeah, uh, it's. I'm sure it's there somewhere, but I don't know. No, I, don't um, I, I can. I, I can pause this in a moment and help you look. No, at no, that's fine. Uh, the, the, start reading it if uh, I need help. Yep, that was the plan. So he lists yep. slaughter. So these are the theric domains. So um, as a quick reminder of this, and they put this uh, above it, that um, essentially the demons that you get, this is what they have. This is their legion rule. So they get an etheric domain. They will either be listed with the rule, or they'll just say etheric domain X, and then you can kind of choose which one. Um, the other piece is that to join units together, you have to have the same etheric domain. Um, I did says, find it, by the way. Good. It says a unit which includes models with a special rule may only have one variation of it. So if you have the slaughter, can't have anyone else. So this is a sort of their legion rule. Um, so for heedless slaughter, this is more of sort of the corn one. Um, a unit enti sorry, entirely composed of models with a special rule, which they have to be, uh, must declare a charge if they begin the assault within eight inches. So if you're within eight, you must try and charge. Right, if there's more than one else at the target, um, you can choose what you want. Um, any charge made so long as the target is within eight. So you have to choose someone within eight. So if you're within eight of someone and there's a unit you'd prefer to charge further away, can't do it. Um, Note that this does not allow models with a special rule to charge a different unit to the one made a shooting attack against. So you also have to shoot them, or if you don't want to charge, shoot someone, and then you can't. So that didn't change. Yes. It's the second paragraph that changed. Yep. Okay. Additionally, so um, like I said, you have to charge someone with an eight if you're legally allowed to charge them. Additionally, an unit entirely composed of models with a special rule adds one to the value of any charge rolls. Plus that one. is different. Oh, they didn't have the plus one to charge nope. distances? So now, and that, that fun fact, I could pull up, probably pull it up from now. I remember complaining about that. All yeah. they had was plus one to the score for the combat and the assault phase. Yeah, for combat And res. plus one for, for sweeping advances. Which they still and, have those two, th two things. And I was just like, wow. So they have to charge someone and they get something on combat, but yep. they're probably going to wait. Like, is, I'm like, uh, this is a charging blood core unit. Why is there nothing but charging? And now... Boom, plus one to charge. Yeah, because okay. at eight, let's assume you're at the eight inches, you need the eight inch charge. A seven to an eight is a big distinction. Yes, and if you is. start getting a little bit closer, I mean, this is, a, we played a bunch of 40K where you get potential rerolls. That's not a thing here. You don't make it, you're just, you're flat out. And we're talking about some units that might not actually even be shooting as well if you're taking some of the smaller, not Lord of War options. So, all right. Um, we'll get more into this when we see the units and what they have. They have it when it makes sense for them to have it. Um, all right. How about one, Malevolent Artifice? I don't think the next one changed at all. I mean, I'm just uh, armor saying. Uh, it is the same. Lower, lower, lower. Yes, exactly the same. All right. So this one is the same. Models with the special roll may reroll all failed armor saves taken against any wounds resolved at a strength value lower than their toughness characteristic. So fun fact, pretty much everything for the demonic engine. <laughs> Um, this has no effect on cover saves or invulnerable saves. Yeah. So unless you're getting hit with, uh, well, Kind Demon Engine doesn't have a toughness, so ignore him. Uh, where's the stupid blood slaughter? There it is. Oh, they're actually only toughness six, actually. Yeah. This, huh. it comes Neat. a little bit more into play than when we saw it before in Bound Demons because you have a few more options that have this higher, th yeah. essentially they have a little bit of higher toughness in general or right around those levels of where you're actually beating out some weapons. Where when we saw in some of the things before, if you're like toughness five, it's a little bit easier to get to fives. If you get to six, that's a, that's tougher for opponents to get to that unless they're really taking heavy, dedicated um, yep. anti-tank style And we're looking weapons. at six and seven. Toughness yeah. six on the slaughter and toughness seven on the death smiter. So that's actually not bad. 
bad. Yeah, so, so I mean, so that's covering your bolters, your heavy bolters, which I don't think the other one's got coverage from. You are covering a decent amount of your options for Volkite. Like, yeah, okay, they got auto cannons, but you have more weapon options that this actually works against. Mm -hmm. but, all right. All right. Um, of the four, is there any particular that you want? Oh, I do like the chitin, but the brass okay. scorpion looks so much cooler. Well, take yeah. take the chitin, take the chitin. Take the kite. Okay, so I'll take the. I'll, yeah, that's all right. So the first thing I will do for anyone watching here, uh, we'll throw up the kite. So yeah, it is the Lord of Skulls with um, a set of legs. So over, do I like it I like better it. than the normal I do. Lord of Skulls? I've I've had this fight with James before many a time because he loves the the corn chip train. He absolutely loves it. I think. Listen, I don't mind Doofy. But the corn train is doofy. It's doofy as hell. Um, it's I it's it. weird. Yes. That's my problem with it. It's a little weird. But, all right. Um, so this, as well as the Great Brass Scorpion, are going to be Lords of War. So no matter how you bring them in, they fill your Lords of War choice. So Cutting Demon Engine is 420 points. Let's see if this guy's as overcost as some of the other Lords of War. Um, he has moved 14 with a weapon skill of 6. Um, he is going to be Heedless Slaughter. As we'll see in a moment, so that helps with his move. And remember, on this, if you happen to be able to throw some cyber thirgy at him, you could actually get the weapon skill seven. Uh, Bliss of skill three with nine strength nine. He's 13, 12, 12 for his armor with eight hull points. He's initiative four with four attacks. Remember, it could be initiative five. Yes. Uh, with the same exact power, yeah. Uh, we'll go through his war gear in a second because we have that at the bottom. So we'll go to that. Uh, he I'll has, scroll to the bottom. I'll scroll yeah, to the bottom. Yeah. So he has flank speed. Flank speed is he can run and charge? Is it at so, the bottom? Should be at the bottom if you scroll down. Uh, nope. Where they give the knight. weapons, they didn't put nope, down flank that flank speed. Nope, that is a knight rule. That is a knight in rule. In the Mechanicum book, which I thought would be near me and is nowhere to be found. <laughs> All right, we're back in one second. Okay, so we are back. So what is it? So... Uh, it is run and charge, but not run and charge. It's a model may increase its movement speed by four inches in any movement phase. Um, so it's not technically that you're running, but if it does so, it may not make any shooting attacks in the subsequent shooting phase, but you may still charge in the assault phase. In addition, when declaring a charge after making a shooting attack, so this is, let's say you don't add the four inches, mm -hmm. a model with the special rule may charge a unit that it did not charge, uh, that it did not target in that turn shooting phase, provided that the target of the charge meets all of the criteria of a valid charge target. Okay, so that also means him with Heedless Slaughter, it, he can shoot at someone outside of eight. If someone is within eight, then he will end up charging them. Because remember, Heedless yep. Slaughter, you've got to be charging. Yep. So um, we'll go through his weapons in one second. So like I said, he has Heedless Slaughter. He has Hammer Wrath 4, which is good. Uh, Rampage D3, that helps make up for the fact he's only four attacks. Um, he absolutely needs that extra. Uh, he has a Malefic Aegis. Malefic Aegis is just your invul safe. It's just a fancy way of saying invul save. Um, it doesn't stack with other invul saves, but it can be improved by things that improve invul saves. Like, but yes, but, but it works in close combat, which all other knights do not. Well, true, unless you're but, a Lancer. but it's because they say their invul save is ranged only. Malefic exactly. Aegis well, is I'm just saying, an invul yeah. save. Exactly. No, I'm just saying that's what makes it very different from the knights. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, for his weapons, he has his giant Gatling cannon. It's 36 inch range. It's strength six, AP four, a heavy 18 pinning with shell shock one. Um, as soon as you get pinning and you also have shell shock, now I care. If you pin without shell shock, I'm not really so concerned. If you do have some shell shock, I'm happy. 18 shots is actually quite a few shots. 36 inch range. on fours though. Uh, well, He's only BS three. I agree, but... When you have 18, so you should still be getting about 9 through. If you're going against Space Marines, you're looking at 7 to 8. They should be get, taking a couple wounds. You're not hitting a heavy target with this. This is, you know, they have tax squads. They have support squads. They have someone at a distance that I'm not worried about yet. Mm -hmm. Or they can't react back and shoot me yet. Or their weapons won't matter because they're not strong enough. And I can pump some fire into those guys. Um, and then he has the Cleaver of Slaughter. 
Cleaver of Slaughter, it's Strength 10 AP 2, it's Melee, Brutal 3, and Shred. So, on your Strength 9, you're going to reroll your wounds. Uh, Brutal 3, so... This... It's a very good weapon. He has the Rampage, which he absolutely he's, needs. I was going to say, he's always going to be outnumbered, so he's actually really 5 attacks plus another D2. That Because that, yes. you're always going to... Yeah. Yeah, he's anywhere from 5 to 8. Still not a huge amount, and his weapon skill being six means you should hit hopefully most things at least on threes. Um, unless you're going against like Praetors or, or something you like hill, that. what you hit, what you hit will wound. Yes. And what you wound, you most likely will kill because of brutal three. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And at the six, I mean, this is a point where he can even still go against other dreadnoughts or or, or go against dreadnoughts in general, um, because he's going to be hitting them on threes, wounding them on twos. Ideally, Three and then and I then think yeah, he just, and brutal. I think he just one shots dreadnoughts. Because remember, he goes to initiative five if you want to buff him. That's so, the big thing. You want him yeah. buffed because then he goes first. Because a dreadnought, could, a, a dreadnought with a brutal three weapon can get some damage into this guy. Not a huge amount, just because of his numbers, but he'll he'll get some damage into him. No, brutal won't matter because oh, yep. he's, uh, you're right. He's armor, he's not wounded. so it doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, yeah. Although the weapons that are tend to be AP two, so um, this guy's a Lord of War. So obviously, if he gets the explode result, he takes the D three. Um. How how does it cost next to a knight? I don't have the knights in front of me. You have the book in front of you. What's the general cost uh, of the knights? Give me a second. Scroll backwards. That's a thing. He's probably closest to... A lancer, let's say, right? Uh, he's kind yeah. of a lancer <laughs> and the castigator. A castigator. So a lancer, just to give you an idea. Really. What's his points? 400? Yeah, give me a second. It went, I forgot that uh, the titans come before the knights for some odd reason. There we go. Yes. So a lancer's 400. Okay. What about the cast again? And 380. Okay. So he's a little bit more. Tiny bit more expensive, but can't take a pilot. Because remember, you th th these guys are cheaper, but you also take a pilot with them most of the time to buff yeah. up to get special things. Well, of course. Um, They have way less weapon skill. Yeah. They're only Same what, amount fours, of right? attacks. Yeah. How many, how many hull points does he get? He's uh, eight. They, they only have seven. So a little bit more points. He's better all around in general. And then his weapons, I, I think, are quite good. I know the other ones, the knight's weapons aren't bad in no way. Yeah. They, uh, neither of the white knight's weapons are brutal. Yeah, that's the other thing. Their weapons do need brutal. The fact they're not yeah. brutal is kind of rough. Yeah, remember we had this. Yeah, none of the knight's weapons are brutals. Yeah. So he beats them out. Easily. Yeah. Yikes. He's He's good. Yes. He's he's pretty damn good. Yeah, for for Lord of War slot, yeah. He, he he does you quite a bit of good. You just you know you would need to have him, that's all. And like if you didn't have him on legs, that's fine. If you got the other kit, just play it, have fun. Who cares? Yeah. Um if, if as soon as it gets to Lord of Wars, I don't care what you bring. I don't care the way you put it together. Go for just what was cool because it's a giant model. And if you're bringing Lord of War, your opponent should know about it anyway. So like we've predetermined that I'm bringing something weird. So overall though, quite good. And that is going to take us to the Brass Scorpion. Before you start talking about him, if anyone's yeah. watching, I will flash him up. Oh yeah, um, go ahead. But... An amazing assume, looking model. I would say, I assume you like this model. Yeah, and if you, the underside of him, which rarely is seen, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you have you ever it. seen this. Uh, snail? Yes, they do. They do show. His oh, the, the the wires and the skulls and shit. Yeah, no, yes. it's amazing. There's like bodies in there. Yes, it, it reminds me of the old mechanic Mago Snailman with all the skulls under his hood. It's very creepy, and I love it. So, Greater Brass Scorpion is 440, which is. A little bit more expensive, 20 more points. Yeah. He's less movement, movement 10. Still weapon skill five, ballistic skill four. Uh, so he's five is he's worse. He uh, oh, the other oh sorry, was six. yes, yes. Six. Was six. So worse weapon skill, better ballistic skill though, ballistic skill four, still strength nine, 13, 13, 12, which ironically is better than the Kitan. Kitan yes. is 13, 12, 12. Hey, this guy's a giant armored scorpion. Um, less really attacks, cool. although One I think less. The same um, no no, same amount because two health crusher claws. Oh, uh, yes, you're right. So, uh, same amount. Well, you well uh, yes, because, and and here's the thing that I don't like what GW does. On this one, the bonus attack for the two claws isn't in there because it doesn't say it is. It doesn't, On yep. one of the later options, it is in there because they say it is. Yep. 
So it is four attacks with eight hull points. Um, it is a knight, it's a corrupted engine, so it's got heedless slaughter, so it is a close combat monster. It's Hammer of Wrath 4, Rampage yep. D3, so same amount of attacks, pretty much. Malefic Ages 4 up, traitor. Five, five up. So, five up, sorry. That's all right. Uh, let's talk about the war gear. It's got a turret-mounted scorpion cannon. Dave, what the hell is that? So uh, the scorpion cannon, they're telling you turret so you can fire in any direction, but it's a 30-inch range, strength 5, AP 4, assault 9, pinning, and shred. Okay. I'm. It, it's not a bad freebie because you're yeah. not having to swap out and you already got the two claws. Yep, pretty much. All right. Um, the despoiler cannon, center line mounted despoiler cannon. So it is 24 inch range, strength 10, AP 3, ordnance 1, 3 inch blast, sunder, rending 5 up, and brutal 3. Ooh. It's like Vindicator cannon, essentially. But better. Because it's sunder and shred. S sunder and rending rending five oh, sunder and shredding. rending oh okay well uh does vindicator have those things i have no idea i thought vindicator was rending six up uh might be a little bit different but it's it's actually uh, i think almost identical to a vindicator cannon vindicator and then it's got two hull mounted hellmaw cannons hellmaw cannons uh their template strength seven ap4 uh torrent six inch mm -hmm. Oh, the torn okay. one, but the, torn six inch. Torn six inch, so you could kind of move them around. Okay, and then the Hellcrusher claws. Wow me with this. Let's see. What All we right, have. let's see. These are not in alphabetical order, and it bothers me so much. Hellcrusher claws, strength ten, AP two. It's melee, brutal two, sunder. Um, so he's brutal two instead of brutal three. He is not shred. I'm not so worried about that on strength nine, really. So. In melee, he's just about as good, and he's got more weapons. Okay. Uh, ironically, I'm less impressed with him than I am with the Kite. Kayan is just more melee destructive. This guy has just more guns, but it's... He serves really... more purpose because he had, with those more guns, and one of them being a rather strong gun, you can actually maybe take out some of the units that you're trying to get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vindicator gun, strength 12, AP 3, so this one is lesser strength. Ordnance 1, 3-inch blast, Sunder, rending on a 6, brutal 3. So, if a Vindicator is 2 more strength, it rends less, though. It's rending on a 6 instead. Mm. Um, when you have brutal 3 and the rending on a 5 up instead, I'm okay with the loss of the 2 strength. Because I'm not firing this at a vehicle. I'm not firing a Vindicator gun at a vehicle, let alone anything else, because I want Brutal to matter. So, I like this one more just because I like the model more, too. It is a very good model, though. It's just fantastic. I've seen it in person. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. This ring's probably with the Thunderhawk. is probably one of my favorite models to see in person. Yeah. He um he just ekes out a knight in just enough ways, nice and strong, and he's very on par with the other one, the chitin. But I do like that he could shoot a little bit more, and you don't really give up much in terms of melee. Brutal two versus three is useful, but when it's brutal at strength nine, and I'm already doubling out on average marines, I'm not quite as concerned. Yeah. So. And, and if you can buff him up to make him that extra weapon skill, make him a six and initiative five, now I don't really care about whatever I go against. All right. Uh, so far, they're not putting them in any way that makes me feel like I can't take them or I don't want to take them. And that was a problem we had when we looked at knights is that like, okay, they don't have brutal. They're lacking a few things. These guys aren't lacking. No, they're not. All right, that will take us to Blood Slaughterer. So now we are looking at fast attack. So is this a base model? Yes. Um, it, uh, uh, so no, and yes. But um, no, let me explain. So when I bought this model, it didn't come with a base, right? Oh, no, th it is. I was able to look this thing up. This is weird looking. Yes. It's like it's, a crab it, monster. It, For anyone not looking, fantastic. crab monster. Oh, no, hold on. It's fantastic. And there's two of them. So the Slaughter is the one with the two claws. Yes. The Impaler, they're two different models. They're the same models. Just one is one weapon. One is the other. Look up the Impaler real quick. Yeah. Same model. But look me, at that weapon. Let me pop that guy back here. Let yeah. 
Flip over. So the slaughter is the two blades, the impaler is the impaler. So it did not come with a base, but no. in the rules, it has a base. And in pictures, they have a base. So it's, I think, 120 mil. Yeah, I can I, see that. I think that's what it is. I tried looking on um, Google what the size was, and it, it, it keeps giving me the freaking dimensions, which I don't mm. need. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never seen this thing. I've never seen anyone have it, and I've literally never known it was a thing. I to look owned up. it until I sold it to J- uh, James. Okay. Um, I like the melee option looking one better. We'll get into the model in a second, um, which one may be rules wise better, but I I think it looks weird with a spear. I'm not a big fan of a spear. A spear is so much fun, though. <laughs> I got. All right. So this guy's 110 points. So. Pretty cheap. Oh, he's cheap, cheap. Yeah. Um, when we take a look at him, so he's move nine, weapon skill five. So again, that better weapon skill. Blizzard skill three. Uh, strength six, toughness six with five wounds. He's initiative three, four attacks. Leadership nine with three up save. Um, he, of course, is a corrupted engine. He has heedless slaughter again. He has furious charge one. He has hit and run, which is nice. Um, his invul save is six up. Uh, has move through cover, which is good. And, of course, is a traitor. And he's got these double blades. It does mention in here that the blades are included in the profile. They do put it in their wording. Um, you can include up to two more if you want. 110 points a guy. And you want to replace one of your blades with the Impaler Harpoon if you want. For the Harpoon, it's a 12-inch range. Strength 6, AP 3, Heavy 1, and Impale. Um, so, for Impale, I have that here. Uh, a unit may reroll charge rolls when attempting to charge an enemy unit that has suffered one or more hits from a weapon that has the impale special rule caused by one or more models in the unit for which the charge was declared in the same player turn. Um, this takes effects even if no wounds were caused by it. So if you hit someone with your impaling weapon, that unit gets to reroll the charge. So here's a way to reroll charges in this game, which essentially yeah. has none. Um, if one or more wounds are caused by this, um, by this weapon, the effect the affected unit decreases its initiative characteristic by one until the end of the subsequent Which assault Which is phase. massive. So if I it, just me hitting you, I get one bonus. And if I actually cause damage to you, then you lose initiative. And these guys are only initiative three. So them losing that initiative means there's a chance they go with you. And if you could buff them to a four, maybe you go in front of them. Um, for their blades, the slaughterer blades... It's strength of user, so strength six, AP three, melee, and just running on six. Um, I mean, they're fast attack choice. These guys are reasonably cheap. Um, you obviously could take them with your Pravian. I, at least for the moment, I don't run a lot of fast attack in my Legion armies. I, one, just don't own them. Two, they're not a lot of those are in plastic currently. So if you had this guy, fast attack is somewhere I have spots open. My saber tanks are about my saber tanks and my Egomatis are about the only thing that actually ever take those spots up. So I have those to spare. Mm-hmm. Um, what about in Mechanicum? If you're doing Trader Mechanicum, is this oh, something I would take you want these. to throw in? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, 100%. <laughs> Vorax. So Vorax, the big problem I had with Vorax is that they lost their AP3 slash AP2 weaponry, right? Mm-hmm. So they're great fire support. But once again, the close combat, they just fall apart. These, on the other hand, I'm going to toss these at Marines all day, every day. Yeah. Um, get like a squad of three and just run them up the board. Screw it. Do uh, any of how many Impaler Harpoons do you take? They hit on fours. So they I would say fours. take. Uh, I would take all three. Losing an attack sucks, but. That's, that's three attacks. But, but having the pretty much guaranteed roll to charge. I don't know what the percentage is on three attacks hitting on fours. So is. You sh- seven and eight, you will get something through. Seven times out of eight. So that's a good percentage right there. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, maybe even decreasing their initiative by one because it's AP3. You might want to tank it on your sergeant, which won't do anything. You know, it'll stop me. But if you don't, decreasing your initiative by one, maybe I buff them. It gives me more variability. The more... The less our impaler part harpoons I take, the less utility I feel that they have. Maybe take two. Maybe take two. 
I two uh, one I think is a gamble. Two I think is pretty consistent. I could see three. Um, I would probably personally go with two, especially because you know it's seventy five percent chance that you'll get it. You're getting to reroll charge rolls. You have to charge someone if they're within eight. Um, and you get plus one a charge. So you're at plus one with re-rolling the charge. Yes. So you're actually very likely to do that. Or if you want to shoot someone who's outside of that distance, you can charge them instead. Getting that plus one with the flat re-roll means now your, you know, nine, ten type charges become reasonably reliable. Um, I mean, I like them. They're cheap. I think if I'm doing them, I'm taking minimum two. I probably do want a squad of three because I don't think one does much. On only five wounds on a three. They save. are massive, though. So actually, so here's the funny thing. I was looking at base mm -hmm. size. Some people put them on circles. Some people put them on ovals. Okay. The uh, not the knight ovals. The um, the one right under that. The wraith knight. Yeah. One hundred seven millimeters. Something like that. I don't know. It's something weird. Well, yeah. not yeah. No, I, I I do like how they look. Too. I I own this model. I didn't build them or anything, but a really cool, very weird looking. I will say, very creepy looking, but very cool. Very cool indeed. Yeah, this is this is definitely a type of model where, um, or a unit where one I don't think does you any good. It it, it probably just doesn't doesn't do enough. May, maybe it could do it for you, but I would at least want a two pack, because with five wounds on a three up save, yeah, you got a six immovable. I don't care about that. Um, I'm probably just not making it. If, yeah. if they're worried about this thing, it's probably not making it. And I don't think they have to dedicate that much fire necessarily to take it out. Maybe. But uh, I'll, I'll what is it? It, Remember, it's a toughness six model. So unless you're heading it with, is it reroll armor saves when it's completely under or under or equal? Strength under. value lower. Under. Uh, under. It has to be fully so under. Yeah, if you're, unless you're going to hit with but, strength six, you're rerolling that three up but no, no, you're not. It has heedless slaughter. Oh, wait. Then who the hell has the... Oh, the freaking decimator. God yes. damn it. All I would right, say, yeah. Unfor now, if that was true, then I would like it a little bit more because yeah. then I could shoot, uh, yeah, the charge extra, but I'm not quite as concerned about my plus one on charge when I get to reroll charges. Yeah. I would much prefer it the other way around, but they didn't do that. So yeah. probably for the best, but they did not do that. All right. That takes This is us. a model I do not like, by the way, the next one. I, 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 I gotta pull this yeah, out. it's just kind of Why don't you I like don't him? It's, I, I do like thick models. You know this. You it's do. just kind of like, very dopey looking. I don't know. It's 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 an old model. It's got the old model syndrome. Okay. In my Let opinion. me. I'll flash this guy up in one second. Yeah. For anyone watching. Yeah. He looks like he's like dreadnought <laughs> circa like first first run. He has that yeah. kind of look. I mean, that's obviously what he is. But he kind of looks like a cross between like a dreadnought and like a almost like a like a linebacker kind of thing. He looks um, <laughs> the base is comically robo small linebacker, him, which yeah. is I do laugh. I don't know what base size that is, but it's hilariously small. He, for what he, oh, he looks like. goes over that base huge. He yes. really does. All right, so he's two sixty five. So he is pretty expensive. Yeah, dreadnought you're looking cost. at dreadnought cost basically. Movement seven, Leviathan, weapon skill five. Uh, ballistic skill four, strength eight, toughness seven, seven wounds, uh, initiative four, five attacks, mm -hmm. um, which is not bad because of his leadership two melee eight, weapons. Exactly, leadership eight, two up save. He has malevolent artifice, so anything that is strength six or lower shooting him, he gets to reroll his two up. That's very nice. Yep. Um, hammer of wrath two, furious charge two, so he can go to strength ten when he charges, and he puts out two strength eight attacks when he charges. Uh, he's got a five up invo, move through cover, and of course he's traitor. So he's got two decimator siege claws with heavy flamers. So heavy flamers we probably could ignore. What are decimator siege claws? Uh, give me one second. There we go. I've so his siege claws. Where's there's siege claw strength user? Um, AP two melee and brutal three. AP two yep. melee brutal three strength eight amazing yeah so it, it's a it, it's the same sort of weapons that dreadnoughts can take yeah exactly um you can replace though either or is it uh, yeah either of its decimation yeah, so you can replace both I think right either uh, siege claw. either of its claws for one for one, one of the, the uh, for one of the following I would say no I, the, I think that means you can only do one but one, that is yeah. poorly poorly worded. 
That is very poorly worded. All right, so you can take 10 points butcher cannon or 15 points a soul burner petard. All right, what's a butcher cannon? Is so butcher the same cannon, as a- um, it's 48 range. Strength seven, AP three, heavy three, rending on a six, twin linked. So it's kind of like an auto, it's an auto cannon, sort of with one extra shot, but twin linked. Wait, AP three or AP four? AP four. My apologies, AP four. Uh, yeah, AP four, rending six. And mm. then his other soul burner petard. Soul burner petard. It's twenty four inch range, strength six, AP four, heavy one. It's a three inch blast on a breaching five up with fleshbane. I think I would just keep the two fists. He's five attacks. I don't mind going to four. If he was four attacks going to three, I get worried. But him keeping four attacks instead, and okay, I get a nice bonus on the charge. I have furious charge. Um, I don't mind it. I'd probably take the soul burner just to get a breaching five up fleshbane to all of that. But I don't mind just keeping the close combat alone. He he is reasonably good that way but i still like a leviathan more and he's essentially a leviathan yeah a leviathan's a little slower it moves six instead still move through cover but the you know the extra toughness that toughness eight makes a huge difference his i mean he will get tons of arm uh, but he gets tons and tons of armor save rerolls unless they throw the weapons at him to destroy him but then again, a Leviathan, a lot of those other weapons aren't even allowed to try and hurt him. So, yeah. um, Leviathans are in plastic. This guy is not. I like those more. And if I wanted to run this guy, I'd probably just use my Leviathan, my plastic Leviathan and say, hey, he's accounts as this for this game. But uh, Leviathan with a Cyclonic Melta Lance and either of the other close combat weapons honestly has done me so so much good i would be struggling to see this guy who's a to sense and purposes sort of the equivalent i would be hard pressed to take this guy instead i honestly really don't want to i think the other guy's a lot better i agree i mean i think that's it yeah even two blood slaughterers Instead, I kind of prefer over him. He's got a lot of good to him, but I just don't... With those close combat attacks only, I just don't know if he's going to do quite enough for you. Maybe he will, but I don't know. He's not thrilling. All right. And then... So, we we did start recording a little bit late. And we were recording a little bit late because we were looking through the mission. And we had to discuss it a little while. Yeah, because... Okay. You, let me let me explain. Okay. So, we were looking at... The, so, it's a, it's a Zone Mortalis mission. Okay. And we've talked about Zone Mortalis already. As you know, Zone no, Mortalis... Haven't. Wait, we haven't talked no, about... We, we haven't, haven't talked done about Zone Mortalis. All right, so for those who don't know what Zone Mortalis is, Zone Mortalis, you can look it up on Google, or, or Dave can show, shoot a real quick picture of what Zone Mortalis board looks like. But the idea is like you're fighting underground or in a spaceship, so it's very tight corridor combat. Oh, uh, 40K did this. Um, boarding actions. Yeah, it's, it's bo- very it's much boarding, boarding actions. actions. And it's usually played on a 4x4 four four table, mostly due to terrain restrictions because no one owns them in that many walls. Uh, but you could play on a six by four as well. But the idea is it's the, the corridors are very tight, very tight doors, um, stuff like that. And the reason I was kind of upset is because, okay, they put this new mission here. Usually when you have a narrative mission or these narrative packets, right, they put in these missions to kind of represent, oh, this is the two forces fighting. Mm-hmm. The problem here is, one, you have two knights, which don't fit on the zone mortalis table at all. No. So then you, so then you look at the other two options. You could technically, well, you can't put a Leviathan because of the amount of wounds. You could technically put a Decimator or a couple Blood Slaughters in the mission. The problem then becomes you actually have to then build a table that can fit these bases in it. And the problem is that if you're using an actual Zone Mortalis table, those walls are preset. They're pre-printed, right? Um, so, listen, am I mad they made a new mission? No. Should they have tossed this mission with the demons? Probably not, in my opinion. That, that's what we were just discussing before. Because these models are massive. They're not going to fit down the hallway of a Zone Mortalis mission. Yeah, you, you have to design the board as you're putting it up yeah. for these guys. Or if they're on a shore base, like 
if they're not on a base that they can fit, you kind of need to make sure you can actually get these guys down here. For anyone who hasn't done Zoro Mortalis before, maybe that's the next thing we'll do is discuss yeah. Zoro Mortalis and all that. Because no, we haven't done it. I'm sorry. Um, I thought we did already. No, yeah. no, no, no. So Zoro Mortalis has some rules about what you're allowed to bring in. Um, they did put this as in the White Dwarf, but I don't have that available. I have the rules in front of me, but I can't flash them up. Um, units can't have more than 15 models. Um, no fortifications, things like that. No anti-grav, it makes sense. No dedicated transports. The other thing is no models that are the Dreadnought, autom Autonoma, um, or Monstrous unit subtype may be chosen if their wound characteristics of eight or more. So actually Leviathan um, and Reserves are like not a thing. Wait, is the Leviathan eight wounds or is it seven? No, Leviathan should be seven. Let me try. Oh, if it's seven, then I apologize. You could, But again, now, okay, so what yeah. is the Leviathan base size? A hundred? Oh, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. I'd have to go look if at my If it's a hundred, I'll put this way. Even, I'll just put this way. If it's a hundred, Scoria is a hundred. Yeah, wound Scoria seven did not, for Leviathan. Then, okay. So they fit. Scoria is on a hundred mil base, and Scoria never fit on his own Mortalis table. Ever. They Not even in like a bigger hallway did they fit. Because zone Mortalis tables, you get lucky if you maybe put two 40 mil bases together. Side by side. Um, but anyway, that's just my my two cents. It's a it, it's a good mission. I read it over. I do like this mission a lot, actually. Yeah. But um, it's not for this narrative, in my opinion. Which no. is not a bad thing. Which is not a bad thing. It's a new mission. Be happy with it. But it's not for these demon engines. Yeah. Which is fine. I don't right. mind that. So, so let's go through it a little bit to talk yeah. about what this is. So the first thing, they don't say this till a little bit later on. For the mission, they do mention later that the setup, it is the st um, strategic Strategium. assault. For strategic assault, here's the way this mission works for setup purposes. The attacker has a 12-inch deployment zone all the way across. The defender has a 24-inch deployment zone, uh, 12 up, 24 across from the middle. So the attacker gets 12 inches all the way across. The defender gets 12 inches up, but they're sitting from the middle. Opposite okay. sides of the board, of course. Um, right. Objectives for this one, though. There are essentially two objectives. The defender's deployment zone is an objective. And then there's a door. For all intents and purposes. Zone Mortals has a lot of doors, but essentially you have a special blast door. Um, your objective zone. What you do is you count up the number of wounds that you currently have alive in there. Both the attacker and the defender. Whoever has more wounds in there is claiming it. Whoever's claiming it turns one and two. You're getting uh, two victory points. D3 plus one for three and four. D3 plus three for turns five. It says five onwards. It's five turns. Yeah. Um, they are giving away because obviously in the beginning, the defender's going to have it automatically for at least a few turns. They're giving the attacker a way that they have to rush there to get there and a way to catch up because they have these larger totals that they can hit. Uh, the blaster objective, it's a piece of terrain that's targeted by the attacker. It's a building that you can't can't garrison. No firing points, no battlements. Armor 12 with 8 hull points. If you pen it, it's D3. You don't roll on the chart or anything like that. Just D3, hull points lost if you pen the thing. When it goes to 0, it just gets removed. If the attacker takes it out, 5 victory points. Um, the attacker's warlord. If the attacker's warlord is destroyed by the end, defender gets 2 points. If they're still alive, the attacker gets a point. Um, whoever's got more victory points at the end of the game wins at the end of five turns. There is no secondaries and no other special objectives by other rules, warlord traits, or nothing. So there is no other ways to gain points in this mission. They specifically call out all those other things are removed. Um, both players, it's 2,500 points. I thought Zomertiles tended to be smaller point totals. Mm. No, not really. Yeah, it dep depends on the zone mortals mission. Honestly, okay. Yeah, and anyway, most of the zone mortals missions we played were were narrative anyway because we go to narrative events. Yeah. Um, it uses the four sword chart that they have in Cthonia. Um, the defender may include units with the corrupted engine, so you are trying to breach into this corrupted area. Um, but but. Uh, within their primary detachment as if they're part of the same faction as the primary detachment so long as no unit from the corrupted engine unit subtype is selected as a compulsory choice. So they can't be like compulsory troops or anything like that. They can't be a compulsory choice. 
Uh, models with the Dreadnought unit subtype and Corrupted Engine unit subtype do not count towards the maximum number allowed models with the Dreadnought units, sorry, Dreadnought unit type as part of the Behemoths of Destruction special rule. Okay. Do you know that rule off the top of your head? If not, I can pull it up and talk about it. I just can't show I have it. no idea what Behemoths of Destruction is. I'm assuming that's a Zone of Mortalis rule. Oh, it's absolutely a Zone of Mortalis rule. Okay. All right. One second. All right, so Behemoths of Destruction. We're back with that. Behemoths of Destruction rule essentially says um, you're allowed one Dreadnought per every thousand points. And oh, any okay. unit with the Dreadnought talent can only be a single model. So it's what limits your Dreadnoughts. This rule is saying that if they're a Dreadnought type or corrupted, they do not count towards that rule. So the Defender, uh, is it just the Defender who brings them? Uh, models, or no, it do doesn't look like it matters to either no. side. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so you can bring extra dreadnoughts and things like that if you really want. Um, that's what they're discussing there. For your Force Org, this Force Org is one HQ, one compulsory troop. You get five troop options, four elites, two fast, two heavy, and a Primarch. So that's what your thing looks like. You wouldn't be able to bring the Lords of War anyway because there's no Lord of War spot. Yeah. Um, we talked about the mission. They talk about the way it should look, that you should have more... Um, Tunnels and entryways from one side, a lot more barricades. They talk about the number of doors you need to have. Um, for the objectives, six inches of either side of the center of the defender's battlefield is where that blast door goes. Um, they talk about reinforcements. You don't have them because there is reinforcement points. That's not a thing in this one. Um, <laughs> the, the way defender, you said that, though. <laughs> yeah. The defender deploys first. Um, don't worry about reinforcements. Then the attacker goes. The attacker gets first turn unless you seize. And like I said, it's five turns. Um, there is one mission special rule, and that's lockdown. At the start of the first turn, before any models have moved, the attacker may select up to three door pieces, door terrain pieces to be locked. Why would the defender want them? I guess just to help funnel. Help paths. funnel them in. Yep. No, it's literally to help funnel them in. Yeah, but I mean, as the attacker, my goal is to get to you. That just sounds weird that I get to decide which the doors that lock. Because sometimes maybe you want you want to I put like a lot of I don't know some world eater rampages on one side. I'm locking that door so it takes you an extra turn to break through that door. Essentially, yeah. Essentially, um, they this means they just start as closed and they have to be destroyed. So they're not accessible in the beginning. So you, I guess, yeah, you can pick the path that you want and lock out some doors, or especially depending on the way you did this, if there's a way for them to kind of sweep around to you, you can lock those door down, those doors down. Um, I think it is a cool mission. Do we? We don't have terrain for Zone Mortalis, do we? Nope, nope. I do not own we can't do. a single thing of Zone Mortalis. Yeah, I'm printing a bunch I of a stuff. Bunch I haven't of printed here. any of it yet. I, I have a bunch of buildings, a bunch of 40K, 30K, uh, epic, stuff like that. Do we have any at the store? Zone Mortal. We could probably use... Um, boarding action stuff. Boarding action, but I don't think we have enough. Okay. I we'll used it when I was playing. Remember when they did boarding actions? Yes. At the very beginning, I do remember I that, yes. It, but that was barely enough to fit a... That wasn't even a 4x4. Four four. That was just two of the boards together. So that's what... Uh, I don't know what the board sizes are. <laughs> uh, for that one, I don't remember. No, it is small. It'd be two board sizes. It'd, it'd be two of them, essentially. Okay. Because um, normally I like when we talk about one of these things, actually trying out the mission doing it. I'm just not sure if we physically can, but we'll see. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe when I'm done printing some of the stuff I'm doing now, I could start printing some stuff for this. Although I think the next thing I'm printing is um, for Epic. Some terrain stuff for that. That's probably the next thing that we need. But, all right, you are the resident uh, demon player and Mechanicum and all of that. Yeah, no, I got that. So what this is less demon. So this is less demon, more Mechanicum, in my opinion. I agree. Um, because we don't have the full demon rules. So I got to kind of do one of the, like, do one of these, throw up my hands and be like, I don't know. Uh, but for Mechanicum, these work. Uh, I absolutely love the Blood Slaughters, taking them instead of War Axe. Excellent choice. I love the chitin as a knight that just does damage. Um, I love the brass scorpion. Although the, the weapons are a little weak on the brass scorpion, believe it or not. But I, it's a cool model, so it, mm. it does work for you. Um, the 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 one that I'm like the least excited for is probably the decimator. Um, I agree. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, we 
if you're playing Mechanicum and you want to take a Demon Engine, by all means, go ahead. None of these are really bad. Even the Decimator is not bad. Yeah. If you're, if you're going with standard legions, bringing your Pravian, um, I do think Blood Slaughters could be a very fun choice. Uh, Decimator, like I said, if, if you're not wanting Leviathan, or let's face it, Leviathans are kind of too good, realistically. So if you're wanting to either play down a little bit or play a list that might feel a little bit more friendly or more um, uh, competitive in terms of that fun level, I think that is a good alternative because you're spending yeah. about the same number of points. You're getting something good. It is very good. Don't get me wrong. But at least other people's weapons are allowed to touch it, where half the time Leviathan, you're not even allowed to hit it even remotely without the thing. So um, Brass Scorpion is actually really cool. I do like that. The Chitin is fine. Yeah, I, I prefer I've the Brass Scorpion. Person. The Brass Scorpion in person is probably one of the coolest models I've ever seen. Yeah. It is nasty amazing. Yeah. No, that, that one I, I really do like. Um, I find it really funny odd I, I they removed all this stuff from 40k and then they didn't have any of it in 30 for a bit and then like okay here you go i don't know where this came from just I don't th know they found the why molds again they did it. yeah no i i don't know i don't know i i i just i'm old enough that now i don't understand any of their decisions and i don't try to anymore no th there's something i play i mean i said they still have the models people still have the models you can potentially still get the models are they all sold out are they actively making these things? No, add to cart the should. decimator at least. So no, they are making yeah. these things. Then. Yeah. Okay. I, w I wanted to make sure it wasn't like, uh, oh, it's also that you can't find it sort of thing. But no, you can at least get the decimator. So that means they're still around. Um. Yeah, I find it a little bit of an odd choice. But giving people options for things they already have or maybe the model that they've wanted to get, they didn't because it's like, well, I can't even bring it. Well, now you can. If you wanted your brass scorpion, you now can fully officially bring it. It is here. Go get that boy. Go Pretty get that much. pincher man. Um, all right. I think that does it for this. This is a rather short one. But not much more we can say related to all of this. We even talked in the beginning a little bit about what we've been up to. So we actually did really get through just about everything. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, as always, do thank everyone who does listen. Uh, remember, we put out all of our things on Podcast Catchers. We also put out other additional content than just this on YouTube. If you are watching these things on YouTube, I do display up what we can. We've been doing this a little bit more as our format lately because what we've been going through. For the next few things, we are for 40K. We're going through Grey Knights next. Um, we mm -hmm. should be starting them this week. I don't know if we'll get them done, but we're going to at least be starting them. We are still waiting on the Votan. Actually... Was it last Thursday? I was down at uh, the War Gamers Guild down in, I forget what town it's in, Yardville or Yarddale or something, um, down South Jersey. And with the owner there, he was proxying a game with Votan. And just when you look at it, there's just not enough stuff. It's not that there's anything wrong with them, except their points. You just don't feel like you get enough. I think that's what it is. So, I, yeah, again, I keep looking at their stats. Yeah. And they hit hard. Like, uh, the melee units are actually scary. Just not for that cost, they aren't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, and it's very like, tough to get uh, grudges, but we'll we'll get into yeah. all of that. But hopefully we'll be doing that somewhat soon as well, that episode. Um, once Steve, hopefully, is uh, back again, we can start doing some more 30K stuff. Because there's some 30K stuff I want to do. I just don't want to do it without him. So I would like to still go through the inductee. Um, or duck die but for that i want to do it um as a ranking thing as well because just talking about them things going to be boring i think ranking it and talking about where they fit in their legions is actually the interesting part and a variety of other things as well um been kind of very delayed on some of the other things that i've been wanting to do just by my own busyness but this week have a little bit more time depending on how the terrain for my mcp event goes if i can get the train <laughs> done i have a few other things i want to put together um, maybe i can go to the conquest event finally you I, are I know going I, to Conquest event? Good. I think so. Yeah, I signed up for it. I Wait, did he do BCP? Not BCP. Um, mm, no, I think it is BCP. I think it's BCP, not Longshanks. All right, I'll check. I I'm almost certain I signed up, but I should probably check. There's only like, the last I checked, there's only two of us signed up, and I signed up today. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's going to be other people who go, and the, you know, obviously there's a notorious problem of people wanting to go and just not signing up because there'll be space anyway. It's fine. We have the space. But... We have the MCP event coming up this upcoming weekend, so I'll be filming hopefully three games out of that. We have much better audio system and all. The camera's still not amazing, but that's the that's the purchase for another day. 
Um, then we have a conquest event. Again, we have better audio, so we should be able to get three games out of that. And then the hope is to record some more 40K stuff and all of that with my new schedule on Fridays. I don't usually get into late. And since I get into late, that makes recording it earlier. Uh, games on Friday just tough. But when that ends, we'll be able to start getting back to doing some Friday recordings. And Friday recordings means more battle reports, stuff like that. Exactly. Um, for anyone who is following us, thank you. Um, if you are not following and you like any of this content, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff really helps us. We are starting to get close to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and that's when YouTube actually cares about you. Um, they don't care about you until you get to uh, that point, especially for hitting SEO, uh, getting our, our, ourselves more noticed. All that helps. We do thank everyone who does. Um, of particular interest, also reviews and stuff like that really help as well. We, as far as I know, I don't think we've gotten reviews in quite a bit. But I also haven't been asking, so hopefully all that kind of stuff. We know this summer we've been a little bit more hit and miss with things. A variety of reasons I'm not going to go into. But hopefully as things now get back to September and all that, we get back to more normal schedules, much more predictable schedules. That's going to make things a lot better for us. All right. Um, we should hopefully be doing at least something else this week, although you might not see it this week because I want to make sure there's at least something that comes up next week when I'm away, but we should be doing at least one more thing this week and seeing something fairly soon. All right, so on behalf of everyone here then at the show, have some good hobbying. It's a great gaming.